What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'll be talking about my Garmin Vector 3S pedals. I use these pedals on my road bike and I absolutely love these pedals. I got them over three years ago and I've been using them since. These pedals are so amazing and low key, minimal effort to install them. And the cool thing about these Garmin Vector pedals, Spindle has a built-in sensor that measures your power and your cadence and then it displays it on your head unit but in the last year or so uh, i've been experiencing some connection issues it keeps disconnecting connecting and i keep losing data and to fix the disconnection issue i've tried using different types of batteries so many times i tried to tighten this cap more and more and some people end up actually stripping the threads inside their uh, pedal body. But after doing some research online, I realized that Garmin has updated their battery board, which improved the connection with the battery. So I reached out to Garmin. Uh, you can chat with them, but chat was down, so I ended up calling them. They sent me a brand new battery board. Um, it's a $30 part, so I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure after I replace this part, it's gonna solve the connection issue. And these pedals, Garmin Vector 3S, they sell on the Garmin site for $599, but you can buy them on Amazon for $529 to have them on sale. And the difference between Garmin Vector 3 and Garmin Vector 3S, 3S only has single side sensing pedal, which is the left one. Vector 3 has both sensing pedals, so, but I have the 3S, so they only send me one battery board. So I'm gonna unpack it, show you the difference between the old battery board and the new one and what they have improved, install it and show you how, if it's if it actually is gonna fix the issue. And before we're gonna get to it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button. I really appreciate all the support I can get. All right, let's get to it. You'll need this tool, 15 millimeter to remove your pedals. Then you'll need this little tiny screwdriver. It came with a battery board kit and you'll need this hex key. I'm not going to be touching my right one because it does not have the sensor, but the left one has the sensor. First thing, open this battery cap, bam, here's my battery. Instead of sandwiching two smaller batteries, I found that using one big one is way better and it lasts longer. And you can buy these batteries for these batteries on Amazon for $16, so I highly recommend just buying these batteries and using them. It's a 2L76. Really nice battery, I love it. So here's my old battery board. Let's unscrew it and pull it out and compare them too. There are two small screws, undo them. Hold the spindle with your hand. Screw number one, screw number two. Here's your old battery board. And the new battery board comes with new screws as well. So let's compare old and new battery board. This is your old one, this is your new one. You can see how the old one on the right hand side, it's made in the shape of H and that one has four connectors. Lift it up a lot more so I believe it's gonna have more pressure on the battery and therefore it's gonna be a better connection. Same thing with the other side. This is the old one and this is the new one. I believe this will give it way better connection. Put screws in here. I'll take a little bit of, bam. Lower it inside the pedal body and you can see those there's two small connectors there that come off the sensor that's located inside the spindle. So we're gonna place it right over that. Place the new battery board in there and carefully screw it in. No need to use a lot of force. Dude, this process is so simple and fast. This is your new battery door. Nice. Now I'm gonna place my battery in here and screw it right in. Tighten it down a little bit. We are done. Put the washer back on, done deal. Guys, this whole process of installing new battery board legit only took like two, three minutes. Now I'm gonna throw on my bike, go for a quick ride and see if they're gonna connect to my head unit and if I'm gonna see wattage and my cadence data. Let's get this pedal installed. Done. All right guys, now the moment of truth. Turn on my head unit clip into my pedals. Let's see if it's gonna detect the power meter. Give it a couple of minutes and power meter came back online. Let's give it some small push. Great. I can see my power stats and my cadence. 
Awesome. So yeah, guys, this solves the issue. My power is being displayed now. And I hope it's gonna stay this way for many years to come. Or at least for the next four years or so until they're gonna come out with some other really cool power sensor. Guys, this is awesome. So replacing the battery board did solve the issue and that's amazing. I'm so pleased. Garmin sent it to me for free. Quick swap and I'm good to go. Guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and it'll help you solve your issues with your Garmin Vector 3S or 3 and get back to cycling and enjoy it more. If you can like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, share this video. I really appreciate all the support I can get. May God bless you guys and until next time, peace out.